In this video, I want to show you how I created this blowing dust and this exhaust heat effect. You can see coming off the engine, uh, there's some distortion from the heat from the exhaust, and then the props are throwing up a bunch of dust. Now, both of these effects are pretty easy to do, uh, so I think take a few minutes to show you how to do it. All right, here we are in the project file. This is my texture, my geometry for my heat. You can see I just sculpted something that uh, kind of looks like something's flowing off the, uh, the engines here. There's a mirror modifier on it because I've got it coming out of two different ports. Uh, you'd have to obviously sculpt something that fit your, your engine. I put a subdivision on it, smoothed it out. There's dis a displacement modifier on it uh, with a cloud texture with these settings on it, and that just adds some bumps to it. And you can change the bumpiness of it with the strength if you want. And the important thing here, though, is that it's set to coordinates uh, are global. And that's because as the cloud moves with the airplane, because this, this is parented to the aircraft, as this moves around, it's going to sh make that cloud kind of bubble and you know change shape, which is going to add to the effect of uh, you know the the heat kind of percolating through the air like that. Uh, and then last not last but not least is a second mirror on the other side, uh, just so that uh, both engines get it. So let's take a look at the the texture for this. So this is going to be hard to see uh, rendered because it really is a distortion of the air. So there's not a lot to look at when it's sitting still. It's hard to see, but you know you saw in the intro video you could see that heat kind of flowing off. And all it's really doing is distorting the air as it moves. So to do that, uh, we'll do a couple things. First of all, I've got a, a noise texture here um, that's you know scaled, and then I do have some distortion on it to create kind of these swirly bits. Uh, but we want this to move during the animation. And the way we do that is you can keyframe the location of the texture. So if you notice that if I move the Y in the negative direction, it looks like those swirls are moving from left to right, you know, they're coming off the engine. So say I'm at the beginning of my animation, I can keyframe this, and then I maybe go to the end of my animation and you know maybe do negative fifty. You know, this the spread here um, will determine how fast it's moving. So your timing your timing would be different than this. Uh, just so you know that uh, the bigger number, bigger the difference here, the faster the, the heat's going to be coming off. But then if we scrub through the timeline, you can see that that heat looks like it's moving. All right, so that's part of it. Now this is one mask, and then we have another mask here that I use to kind of fade out the effect. So anything that's white is going to have the strongest effect, and anything that's black is going to have zero effect, and then you know, there's going to be a transition here. So to do that, there's just a quadratic texture, uh, gradient texture. Um, it's rotated 90 degrees on the z-axis, so I get this vertical line here, and then you know the x-axis just kind of moves it back and forth. Um, that'll that'll affect how where the fade actually starts, and it's on object mode, so that uh, each object gets its own fade. These two are then multiplied together, and you get this. This is the final mask here. So anything that's black is going to have the least amount of distortion. Anything that's white is going to get the full distortion. This map range here. Um, adjusts how strong the index of refraction is. So this seemed to be fairly sensitive. Um, you can see how it changes. It makes it almost white to the eye, but coming in here on this index of refraction, it makes a big difference in the glass. Um, if I mask this out, you can see what it looks like without this range. So that's just a, that's just this multiply node coming straight in. You get a very glassy look. Uh, but then if you remap the nodes, or remap the values, so that instead of going from 0 to 1, it goes from 1 to 1.02 in my case, uh, you get a very transparent look to it. Right, and then that is then mixed together uh, into a mix shader bit using a uh, layer weight facing node. So let's take a look at that just by itself. That's what that looks like. So you get uh, kind of some shimmering uh, based on the uh, camera angle. Which is kind of cool, the uh, facing angle, and then again I remap that uh, with a mapping, a map range node, um, just to kind of crunch the values a bit. So actually I'm spreading them out. So it's going from 0.2 to 0.6, and I'm spreading that from a zero to one, uh, just adjusts. So you can see without it, that's what that looks like, and then that just intensifies things. I think it makes it look kind of hot, uh, and then that is then used to mix the two together. It mixes a transparent shader and the glass shader, and the transparent is going to come into effect any place where there is white, 
right? And so anywhere there's white is going to be a transparent shader, and anywhere there's black is going to be the glass shader, because that's the way this works, right? Because this is, if it's at one, it's the transparent, or the bottom plug, and then if it's zero, it's the top plug. So that's how that works. And then the final shader just looks like that. And you saw in the intro video how when this is animated, it looks like you know, there's heat coming off of there. All right, and that is it for the heat. Let's take a quick look at the dust. Go back to our scene, gonna hide my heat, and turn on my dust. And so it looks a little similar. So I've got two pieces of geometry here that come off the plane, you're know, just starting right behind the props, and they have similar modifiers. So there's the original geometry, that's all it is. There's a subdivision on it to smooth it out. There's a displacement node, just like on the heat, using global, so that as it moves, I get that ripple effect. And then, of course, there's a mirror on it to put it on the other engine. So let's take a look at the shader for this guy. And it's going to be a very similar idea yeah. with masking and feathering and stuff like that. But this time, we don't need to uh, use a glass shader. We can just use a principled volume to get our dusty look. So let's take a look at noise and render that. So you can hear, see here I've got a very subtle noise going on here. And it is keyframe, I do have a keyframe, so that if I move my, scroll through my animation, you can see that this Y value is changing. So all this is doing is I've keyframed this Y value, which means that this texture is moving along the Y axis as the animation runs. And that's gonna make it look like our texture is moving. Let me go through here, because I've crunched the values a bit using that, uh, color ramp, and now you can probably see it better, how that makes it look like that stuff is moving through the air. And then there is another gradient again. Uh, this time, though, I've got the gradient tied up so that the top of it is black and the bottom is white, which means that the dust is going to be accumulating mostly at the bottom, and it's going to fade out um, to no dust at the top there. Those two masks are then combined with a multiply node to get the final effect of the mask here. So we got the most of the dust here at the ground, less dust up there. This up here, another gradient texture just to define where the density of the dust, dust, dust is. And combine these two together. And we're going to use this mask to actually make the colors of the dust. So we get some, um, some variety. You can make these darker if you want, make higher contrast, lower contrast. And then of course the size of the, uh, the noise you have is going to uh, make a difference in how how much of each color there is there. Uh, but for this case, we'll just leave it here. And that goes in, and so we get a little variety in the color. And for the volume shader, you can see how we got the dust collecting down here at the bottom. Now, if this is just set to one, uh, it's opaque. So you get like this solid, solid dusty color, or you know, solid dust object, uh, very little uh, transparency here. So this last little multiply node here is used to uh, modify the density of this final value. Because right now, if I plug this guy directly into there, you can see it's almost too transparent. Um, and then adding this little multiply thing uh, lets me increase the density. So I could go, you know, you could you know, adjust that to make it more and more or less dense as you need it. All right, and that's how those two effects work. So I hope you found that useful. Um, like I said, they're not very hard tricks to do, but I think the effect is kind of cool. You get that rippling heat and you got the dust blowing off the engines. Uh, I think it adds a nice extra touch to your renders, your animations. All right, thanks for watching.